Good afternoon, everybody. It is 104 here in Florida, and blessings to everyone. If you hear a humming or an echo, that is my air conditioner, you guys. I got a new air conditioner today, and it is it is a it's a big one, it's a heavy one, and it's a good one, and it's a little loud, but um, it does the trick. All right, you guys. Um, I have been sick with my dental uh, situation for the last few days. I've been trying to do the very best I can. Uh, last night I was on a live feed with Amanda Christian and um, yeah we got a video over there and bless her heart when I chimed in you can hardly hear her so I'm sorry for that um, but I did discuss the three days of darkness and uh, the reason why I did this poll and I want to share that with you I want to try to make this video quick you guys I want to try to bring you two more but the next one that I have, it's a, it's a rather long teaching, and I don't think my mouth is going to let me do that today, y'all. Um, so let's go on. Um, all right, the reason why I did this poll, uh, everybody, is because, well, uh, probably about a week ago, um, I was wondering if I needed to do a video on the Three Days of Darkness. And then I thought, well, now, nah, you know, I've already done that. And um, there are several people out there, including Amanda, that has done very good videos on it. And I thought, well, it's taken care of, right? And uh, so I decided to leave it alone. And then I got a couple of confirmations that I'm supposed to do that. So um, what I was doing the other day, a few days ago, is I was checking out the videos on the days of darkness right three days of dark dark darkness excuse me guys and I heard a, a woman say that uh, she doesn't like we're not supposed to be in fear and that we are children of God and that is absolute truth and um, well her concern was is that people were afraid of the three days of darkness and she was trying to, you know, ease their fear on that. But the problem with the situation is, is this same person preaches and teaches. And the minute you open your mouth on YouTube or anywhere and you start teaching the Word of God, you just became a teacher. It's a lot of, that's a lot to think about. Okay? This person teaches that you can lose your salvation. And that's why I did that video, you guys. I did it because I want everybody to understand that we are saved and we are sealed. And I am going to do a long video on it, two of them. Showing that it, it's not our blood, it's not our works. It was his work, it's finished, and it was his blood. One time sacrifice in Hebrews 10.10. 10. Uh, one time for all. One time. One time repentance when you ask him to be your savior because you know you're a sinner and that you need a savior. And you receive him for what he did for you. Period. Like I said in the um, video last night, it's not Jesus plus Sherry. It's not Jesus plus Jack. It's not Jesus plus Mary Lou. It was a finished work done by him. There is no other name under heaven by which we will be saved. But Jesus. That's it. None. So back to the three days of darkness. Um, the problem that I had with the situation, like I said, is you're saying the children of God are not supposed to be in fear. But yet, the doctrine that you're speaking is a doctrine of fear. As a matter of fact, uh, Paul warned against it. He said, if anybody comes to you with any other gospel, even an angel, let them be accursed. Let them be accursed. Now, there's two different meanings to that, and I'm not going to get into that right now. We'll discuss it in the video that I uh, present to you later on. Uh, but um, the problem is, is I wanted everybody to realize 
<clears throat> that we are children of God. You don't throw your children into hell if you love them. Now, I know there's parents out there that are mean, that, well, who knows what they could do to their children. There are a lot of abusive parents out there. But God is not abusive. God is righteousness. God is love. God is love first, and that means he's complete righteousness. Complete. One for all and all for one. That's why there has to be consequence to sin, and that's why there had to be a sin debt payment. And Jesus took care of that for us so that we could walk in freedom and in love with a thankful heart. So, when we tell people they can lose their salvation, what does that do? That makes them fearful. Uh-oh. Did Wait a minute. How do you know you're saved right now? Where is the measuring stick? If, if that's your thought process, that at any moment, for any reason, or is it just your reasoning, that you could lose your salvation. Oh, that was the last sin. Uh-oh, you're kicked out of heaven. Really? Which sin is it? And how many times do you have to do it? And how good is good enough? How good is good enough for you to earn your way into heaven? You can't answer that. You don't know. But God knows. Perfect righteousness. And that's only through the imputed righteousness that we get through believing upon Christ. That's it. So... I think the worst of the two fears would be that you are living in fear, thinking that you can be cast into hell, even being a child of God, a born-again believer, born-again believer. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son for whoever shall believeth, in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen? Amen. It's about faith. It's not about a letter of the law. It's about a thankful heart. It's about the circumcision of the heart. It's about cleaning the inside of the cup, not the outside. So, we have to take a look at our doctrine. We have to take a look at that doctrine a little bit closer, you guys. That it is a false gospel. It is not the true gospel. We have to stand up for the gospel. Why? Because I love God and I love Jesus and I love the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to stand up for what Jesus did. And I'm not going to slap him in the face. And I'm not going to make what he did in vain. Thinking that my works can add to it. And make it all right. I can make it right. I can add to it in... in make it come to be because of the, my actions of what I do. When you are a true believer in Christ, you have the Holy Spirit in you. You have the Spirit of love in you. Jesus said, this is what he said, when he was confronted with the Pharisees. He said to them, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and love one another. And on, on those two commandments, hang the whole law. The whole law. See, the Ten Commandments is incorporated into the 613 of the Torah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He had to fulfill the whole Torah. So do we. But it's impossible. It says in scripture that it, uh, well, that no flesh will be justified by the law. Because, why? Because if you've missed one point, then you've missed the whole thing. And you, at that point, are an unclean vessel for the rest of your life. Well, I think we've all done that. And we've all fallen short of the glory of God. We're not perfect like God. So I think that we, we need a Savior. 
we're not even if you got one little tiny sin even if you thought a bad thought that's against the grain of God that is against the righteousness of love um, and the holiness of our Lord God you will not be allowed in heaven that's a transgression it's not only in deed it's in thought we have to think about these things you guys you know and most of the people that are on my channel their grace praise the Lord thank you Jesus and I love you and if I didn't love you whoever is listening to me if I didn't love you I wouldn't be telling you this we're not supposed to be in fear you know perfect love casts out fear Jesus died for us how much more perfect do you want so therefore I would think that spewing out that we can lose our salvation that Jesus' blood was not good enough that his one-time atonement on the cross it says in Hebrews 10:10, 10, 10, he was crucified one time for all for all who for all people that have sinned oh that's all of us repentance we repented we went to him and we said I'm sorry for my sin I know I'm a sinner and I need a savior thank you Jesus for what you did for me I believe in you I believe what you're saying I believe the gospel I believe that you did that for me one time for all sin all sin was put on the cross one time the perfect sacrifice once not the bulls and the goats they did over and over and over and over and over and over again one time one time confession I'm not you know I'm not saying if you do something you think something and you get a conviction in your heart from the Holy Spirit that's what he's there for he is to help us to grow into being more like Christ you want to say you're sorry to God? Absolutely, please do. You want to stop that sin or you, you ask the Holy Spirit to please help you stop that sin? Wonderful. That's an awesome thing. But it is His righteousness that gets you in, not yours. His. His perfect righteousness. So, back to the three days of darkness. I want to say a little bit about that and then I'm going to be done with the video, you guys. And I just want to let you guys know, look, I, I love you. I love everybody. I, I really do. I love my Lord God, first above all. But I love people in general. Why? Because I have the agape love of the Holy Spirit in me that I... Um, was indwelled with when I was a little girl and um, boy I've learned a whole lot throughout my lifetime about the Word of God about God about the Holy Spirit about transformation about the two minds that are in a born-again believer there's a whole lot it's not just cut and dry you guys but I love you and if I didn't love you I wouldn't I wouldn't share these things with you and I'm sorry I'm sounding a little I don't know what you want to call it um, disturbed <laughs> it, it's really to me that is real fear when you think that you can lose your salvation and at that point you're going to hell there is no more salvation for you a done deal. Oh, but you can re-believe again. I don't think that would be the way it would work. Think about it. Think about that for a while. Uh-uh. You've already believed. And now you're saying you can cancel it out. Uh-uh. There could be no worse fear on this earth. In my eyes. Now, that's just my eyes. And somebody telling me, I oh, guess what? You can lose your salvation. And, uh, okay, where's the measuring stick? How many times do I have to sin or what do I have to do or think or say 
or not think or say or do to have that happen to me? Where is the measuring stick? You can't answer that. It's not in the Bible. It's not in the Word of God. There's a reason for that. It's because we are saved by faith and not by works. And if you want to think that, then oops, you might not be saved right now. That last sin you just did, maybe you're, you're thinking ugly thoughts about me right now because you're upset about what I'm saying. But it's the truth. Uh-oh, you might lose your salvation right now being upset with me. Because, you know, it says in the Bible that if you hate your brother, that's murder. You got hatred in your heart towards somebody, that's murder. So we're going a little bit beyond your deeds on the outside. We're going to the cup being washed on the inside. And that's what the Holy Spirit's there for. The communing of our spirit with His. So, in conclusion to that part of this video, I believe that that would be a worse fear is that you are speaking and telling people that, oh no, you can lose your faith, which is a lie. <laughs> uh, we are allotted faith. And I'm not going to go into I have a long teaching to share with you guys to show you you cannot lose your salvation. You cannot lose your faith. And you cannot be cast out into outer darkness. You cannot go to hell if you are a child of the Most High God made a new creation in him on the inner man mm -mm. it's not it's not gonna happen it can't happen because then that cancels out what Jesus did for you by no other name shall you be saved but by the name of Jesus so that would be the worst fear for me is for somebody to tell me, you know what, you can lose your salvation up that last sin you just did. <gasps> ooh, ooh, and which one is it? And how many times? How good is good enough? You can't answer that. Quit working. Start resting. He said, my yoke is light. Rest in me. I did it all for you, he says. It's in the Bible. He did it. He did it. Believe upon Him. That's what He wants you to do. So, this three days of darkness, you guys. Like I said last night, let's think about this reasonably. You know, there's almost 7 billion people in the world. And if I woke up tomorrow and it was pitch black outside, what would be the first thing that I would do? Well, I'll tell you what. The first thing that I would do is I would go outside. <laughs> I'd be like, what in the world's going on? And I think pretty much anybody would be the same way. So all God's going to allow all these people, because most people don't on this earth don't know about this, okay? Not everybody's on YouTube. Not everybody's looking at these types of prophecies. Um, they don't know about it. So they're way to heaven which is believing upon Jesus has now just been relinquished and all these people that have gone outside are going to die because it was black outside it was dark because they wanted to know what was going on because the demons are going to eat them or infect them come on no mm -mm. you got to put tape on your windows to keep the demons out well <laughs> Yeah, they're spiritual beings, you guys. They can go through the walls, you know. They're spiritual. They're they're not. You're not going to keep them out with the tape. So, with all that being said, I mean that's just common sense, you guys. And another thing, this right here, this says the act of God. The most spectacular aspect of the act of God will be the three days of darkness over the whole earth. The three days have been announced by many mystics. And they got them named here. These are people that are not indwelled with the Holy Spirit. 
they're hearing from a different spirit, spirit you guys. Not from God. That's not in His Word anywhere. Is there darkness in the Word? Absolutely. Is there spiritual darkness? Right now there is. Absolutely. Is there three days of darkness that when you go outside, you're going to be killed and eaten and infected by demons? Uh, no, I don't know. That's not in the Word anywhere, you guys. It's not in the Word. But, you know, we got Matthew 12, 38, um, where Jesus is talking about... Um, an adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and the only one that he will get is um, from the prophet Jonas. And then it says, For as Jonas was in, uh, was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now, this was a prophecy of his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And then we got Exodus 10:22, and Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt. Three days, they saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. Well, that light was the Lord God. No, it's not going to happen. And that has nothing to do with the three days of darkness. Let's see, John 8, 12. Uh, then Jesus spake, on, uh, spake again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So... These special candles that are blessed, they're just candles. You do not get the light unless you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Then the Holy Spirit comes in and indwells you, and then you have the light. Then you have the light. Then you are protected. From that second on, you are protected. Unless the Father allows you to go through things for your growth. Okay, let's see what else here. Um, okay, Isaiah 60, 1 through 3. Arise, shine, for the light is come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and the gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. This is a picture of Jerusalem in the thousand year reign, you guys. But there is no three days of demons eating you and infecting you. And you dying immediately when you go outside. One more. Hosea 6, 2. After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up. We shall live in his sight. There's no three days of darkness there, you guys. As a matter of fact, there's no three days of darkness nowhere in the Bible that is pertaining to the prophecy false prophecy that is going around. Don't be in fear of that. That was from Satan. That was not from God. Um, excuse me, guys. Okay, so I will be back with a clear teaching, well, a couple of them, that we cannot lose our salvation, that we are solid in Christ. Um, can't be undone by man. It can't be undone by man. It was a perfect work from God. So anyways, um, that is why 
I did this poll is because I want people to understand you're worried about them being in fear because of the three days of darkness you should be worried about them being in fear of them losing their salvation you know there are people that actually commit suicide and I, I am so serious right now because they think they cannot hold up to what God has expected of them and he all he expects of us is to love him and to love one another to receive whom he sent for their propitiation for their expitiation for their atonement for their sins so that they will have a thankful heart and a loving heart towards him and towards man towards each other god bless you i hope i hope this has helped somebody to understand that's right we are children of god and not only that this is god's creation out here every man woman and child and he does not want not one to perish and that type of a prophecy well that just takes all the love out of god okay uh, and it being in the last days right now it's not in there it's not in eschatology nowhere He's trying to, right now, I believe in my heart, he is trying his very best not to put judgment on this earth out of love. But there is going to come a time where it will take place. And I don't know when, but it will be in his perfect time and in, in his perfect wisdom. And... Um, I don't believe it'll be that way. I really don't. Um, there will be a judgment because it says it in the Bible. And it talks about war, actually. Uh, but anyways, God bless each and every one of you. Please know that you are saved and you are sealed to the day of redemption. That's in Ephesians 4.30 and that's in many other scriptures also. The problem is, is they're not rightly dividing the word and they're not correctly interpreting scripture. That's the problem. And I have a video in my library that you guys can go look at that, rightly dividing the word. It can help you. And when you learn that, when you understand who you are in Christ at that point, that you have just become an adopted son or daughter of the Most High God, the Most High King, nothing can touch you. He's God. You belong to Him. He bought and paid for you with His blood. You guys have a blessed day today. I will be back with some other teachings. Um, before you dismiss it and say, I'm not listening, please listen. And then, you know, whatever you conclude is what you conclude. And you have the right to your own opinion. I pray that the Holy Spirit leads you into all truth. And I just want to say that there is no name, no name, other than the Lord Jesus Christ by which you will be saved. God bless you. Amen and amen.